Ladies and gentlemen, to another session of Focus on Liberia's on the Marketplace, where we talk everything finance, business, and economics. Uh, I am your co-host today. Uh, I have in the studio with me, Telvin. Uh, Alex will be joining me today. Uh, today's topic will be something very, I, I think, what I call relevant, uh, especially what is happening in uh, in what I call the Liberian social verse um, regarding business. And so for the next hour and a half, please join us, you know, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, tea, or whatever you drink, water, uh, as we talk about business continuity. Uh, business continuity, when we talk about business continuity, we want to talk about first, how you structure a company um, to make sure it continues after you. Uh, we talk about succession planning succession planning you want to think about generational right and you know when you start the company how do you separate it from yourself you know a business by itself is an entity uh in the famous word of Mitt Romney the former uh presidential candidate he said business within itself is a person you know when he said it i know people laugh at him but that was the actual truth is a living breathing evolving person within itself if you want to put it that way entity within itself right so how do you separate that from yourself and the business as well uh we also want to talk about some protections uh we call it key person insurance uh that's something we'll, we'll get into you know the purpose of it why you use it and why will you even get it if you have a business um yeah, as i said earlier why do we even want to talk about succession planning um, well, as I say, you want to think about generation. And we're going to go over certain examples. I would say maybe two or three. Uh, two specifically. Uh, one of the one I want to talk about is Kobe, Kobe Bryant, his company, Brian Stiebel. Uh, it's a venture capital. Uh, and also, the, well, the famous one that has happened in our community, the, uh, you know, we, we got to thread water there carefully about the, you know, the whole Spoon Network debacle. What happens? Uh, after this, you know, what happens during the uh, the crisis? How do you plan post-crisis? How did he plan before the crisis? How is he planning during the crisis? And how do you plan after the crisis? So today, that's what we're going to be talking about. I hope, again, take your time, share the show, and join us. Bring your comment, bring your, uh, your questions as we uh, discuss this topic. Guys, uh, welcome, and nice to see you all. Good afternoon. Uh, glad to be on after a while. Um, um, looking forward to the discussion. Perfect. Alex. 
Yeah, thank you, Gabriel, for that that intro. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, this is a good topics that um, that we're gonna be talking about today, and then uh, as part of that, we yeah we'll talk about different kind of businesses and and in fact, how um, that will also include how um, businesses when you talk about business continuity, how businesses even get in trouble, especially exactly. with with um, the, the authorities in especially in the United States of America, and how to prevent some of that you know, that things from happening in some of our business in, you know, uh, even in the accounting and tax preparation world. Um, there's, there are a lot of cases about, you know, you know, people getting involved in fraudulent activities and things like yeah. that. And there's a, in fact, there's one case um, in, in the state of Texas, um, this is public information where um, a lady, you know, got in trouble. She's been barred from, from preparing taxes again and she and her companies. Um, so yeah. in, for the kind of work I do too, I, I come across the, those those kind of those kind of stuff. But Perfect. again, because of confidentiality and the things that I do, I, I you know I just talk on the surface. I don't you know talk about the details. Absolutely, we understand. And um, so uh, without further ado, let's just dive into it. So I want us to take this uh, meat and eat it off the bone bit by bit. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about here is structuring a business, which should be when you're structuring a business, uh, first of all, you know, you should be thinking about continuity. Continuity meaning is this what we typically call in the Liberian uh, parlance a hand to mouth business where you just make profits, profit and, you know, consume the profit. Or is this something you're looking to pass on to uh, your children, uh, generation? And how do you go about doing that? So the first thing we want to talk about is structuring a business, which is the LLC, uh, the S Corp, and the C Corp, right? For I'm sure most of you are aware, uh, and you guys can keep me honest here uh, if I leave out some pieces here. But L L LLC is technically a limited liability corporation, pretty much. It offers a level of protection, right? Um, there's also the S Corp. The S in that uh, S Corp is small corporations. That is up to your uh, 300, 400 people. And then the C Corp is just like the Fortune 500 company, the Fortune 100 companies, right? Each one of them offer a level of separation from you to a degree, but I think the one that is uh, separate you completely from itself as a living entity is the C-Corp and the S-Corp. LLC, even though they said limited liability, hence again, the word in that is limited, even though the, the liability is there, but it's limited to an extent. You can still be liable uh, if you your company calls anybody, but they can still sue you and go after your assets. So the limitation there is again, in the word limited liability. The S-Corp, it's a complete separate entities. The same thing with the, um, uh, the C Corp. So that is basically an overview of business structuring, right? So uh, do you guys have anything to add to that in terms of um, if you guys were structuring a business, like I'm not saying they should be unadvised, you know, given different scenario, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Sometimes I like the lady to go first. I know it's it's not really a question, but I just want to hear your thoughts on, on, yeah. on that. I think I think you hit uh, the key points there, but also in terms of structuring a business, you want to look at what what is your goal for each other's business, what you're trying to accomplish, and how to structure in a way that you reduce the risk on yourself versus you know versus. Uh, you know, the way you structure it, what are you going to take 100% of that risk or you, maybe the liability if it falls over or part of the, you know, the liability. So it's very important yeah, as far as structure. And also the people you're bringing in to be uh, co-owners or co-partners, very important. Very right. important. Yeah. Yeah, it's also, it's, uh, it's you know, um, the, the, the diff different types of businesses, um, uh, whether it's sole proprietorship, whether it's LSC as corporation or corporation, and and 
small businesses start, uh, like you said, stop at uh, S Corporation, but you know, again, it depends on the size. So for tax purposes, there you go. Uh, yes, um, tell me, tell me not talk about your goals and, and what you want to achieve, how far you want to go and things like that. Mm -hmm. And also how you want to, you know, separate the business from yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. So that um, the liability of the business don't become your liability. Um, in some of my training, I always, I always bring this whole accounting concept, the business ent uh, entity concept where it says that the owner should be separate and distinct from the, from the business in that um, your bank account, your everything should be separate. Um, right. Your record keeping should be separate from your personal self. You should learn to pay yourself, declare yourself a salary or a dividend or, or you know, any from the business so that uh, you separate uh, right. some yeah, distribution from the business so that you're separate from the business. If you're giving business money, it's either a loan or an investment. If the business is giving you money, it's either a loan or a distribution to you. And then, you know, if it's a loan, yeah, make sure you pay it back. But for LLC, LLC normally, you know, sometimes it's, you know, single person LLC, most most likely. And for tax purposes, you can you can include that on your personal tax return on your 1040, yeah. right? Um, but then if you, you know, there's a selection you have to do at a certain point in time. There are different forms that you have to fill out. Um, so if you want to uh, separate the LLC from yourself, then, yeah, you have to do that determination. Right. You got to, you know, fill out a form with it because those things are for, you know, for the internal revenue service. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also, you know, accounting record keeping. So um, you got to do all those things. Uh, uh, when you... Open an LLC, for example, is 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 uh, let's say uh, um, it, it, it take a default it take a default position, right? So that uh, it's a single person LLC is it's on you. Or if it's two person LLC, then you can split it by you know other issuing what we call a ten ninety nine. If you pay somebody, or you can do a schedule K thing where you can you know split the profits and stuff like that, so that you take your schedule which is, is in this form your your salary and then you can put that schedule k on your on your your own personal tax so right but then if you want to grow if you want to bring investors in and you still want to you stay a small company which is not traded or uh, like you said 4500 company uh, you don't have to be 4500 company but once you you start to bring in more investors you start to trade on the stock exchange then you go c corp but you stay a small business under certain things and under certain uh, number of ownership, then you do the S corporation at that point. Right. Right. So what you get from the business, you get your different forms that you use on your own personal. So at that point now, um, because S corps are not normally, it's just for, for reporting purposes, they are not normally, you know, taxed like that. Like, but the individual yes. owners are taxed. So, so you got to do all those things, and and it's good to talk. And again, we issue a disclaimer: these are not advices. We're just having a conversation, uh -huh. but you have to talk to the right, the right people. Many at times, our people like to do it themselves, and then they get they hit a bottleneck, right? Uh -huh. They like to feel, you know, people. Not just when I say our people, not the people from our. I mean, everybody, every small business, whether in any geography, right? Yeah. When they start newly. It's good to start good. That is why during the, for example, during the COVID time, a lot of entity did not get, a lot of small businesses did not get these PPP loans. They did not qualify for it. And some of this program, we got involved with it uh, in the state of Minnesota, where we had to, you know, uh, train. Just uh, recently, last weekend, I was in Minnesota doing the same kind of stuff, um, working with small businesses on how to keep their book and qualify for Loans and um, loans and 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 grants and and stuff like that. So, so you you got to start. You got to do it right, right, right? So that's that's the base. You yeah. got to do it right, and again, you got to get the accounting right. We don't want to hire accountant. We want, we think we can do it on our own. You got to you know, and the accountants the the charge the charge is is ranged, right? Depends on your size. Depend on your your you know your capitalization that's how the, the charges are if you're a small business you're coming up i mean no accountant is crazy to charge you it also varies on the complexity of the structure that yeah, you want to have yeah. Right. Right. Like yeah but you need to talk to the right people you need to talk to you know, the right people who will guide you through the process yeah, yeah. i think that's very important because you know I, 
besides working as a government auditor for so long, almost 10 years and now on private side, but I, I've seen it even in government auditing, even in private sector, where, I mean, in, in communities or where people just try to figure out on their own. Sometimes they'll go get these softwares and think, you know, they can do their accounting and then you mess it up, you get in trouble with your books, you get in trouble with state and federal, you know, people. So to your point, it's very important to always get the expert. There are ranges. You can get somebody for, you know, just for that yeah. one hour, you know, to get your books right or once a month. I know people who used to put people on retainer once a month. I hire Alex for just once a month to review my book to make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Even full time, you know. But yeah, Tavina, you're right. Even even as simple as registering your business, right? It has its own complication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you think you can just go online? It's simple. You pay the fifty dollars, or you pay the depending on what the state the secretary of state charges you for paying that money. Some state it ranges. Some state can charge you, you know, fifty dollars. Some state charge you two hundred something. Like that. Some, like in Texas, they charge you three hundred dollars. But it goes beyond, right? You, some state calls for annual renewal. Some state you have to pay something. Some state you just have to go in the system and 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 renew. A lot of the business people, you're busy. You forget, like if you're in a franchise state tax, like Texas, Tennessee. You 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 get dinged for not filing. Your business could be uh, discontinued, right? Just for not whether you make money or not, you have to file. All right. Now in other states, you get deactivated. You are inactive. Right? Yeah, they put you on what we call administrative uh, dissolve. They dissolve, they dissolve you administratively until that doesn't mean. It's canceled. It's there. It's this not. It's dissolved administratively. So whatever, if you go there to say, hey, two, three years past, you haven't filed. You can go to your secretary of state and pay whatever back taxes you have, and that become active again. So mm -hmm. let's say you go to a whatever bank or whatever institution to take money. They go on that side. They see. They say, oh, your business has been administratively dissolved. You know, but it's not. Doesn't mean it's canceled. It's closed or whatever. You just gotta go there to the secretary of state, pay whatever back taxes you have in file, pay the what we call annual filing fee, right? And it becomes active again. So um, one thing I usually, when I used to, you know, deal with a lot of small company, what I usually tell them is, when you're starting out. You're small. You're matter of fact. You're right out the gate. You probably don't even have the money to bring on an accountant or a lawyer. But what I usually tell them is, talk to those people. Not specifically that you want to bring them on right now, as you know you want to pay them, but just keep them as relationships within you, with yourself. Mm -hmm. As you grow, when you need them, now you have that. It's not like let's say you and I. I'm running this. I just started this company. I know what is it, Alex Duck taxes, right? I don't have money maybe to hire him right now, but I can keep that relationship, talk to him. So he understands the business that I'm in. He knows it very well. So in case I want to, you know, hire him as my as my CPA or whatever it is, he's already familiar with it. Let's say if you were a lawyer, if I wanted to talk to you now that I wanted a legal advice, you're already familiar with the business that I'm running. That I don't have to come and sit down for three, four, five hours trying to tell you what I do. You know, so keep those relations. It's not an advice that I'm giving you, but it's usually something that I usually tell. I used to tell my clients, keep those relationships with you as you grow. Allow them to grow with you. Whether it's a CPA or a, a lawyer, even a banker, have two or three banking relationship bankers at a bank who are familiar with your business in and out. Because if you go apply for a loan. Those are the people that will vouch for you and be able to, uh, um, you know, give you whatever you want to to get. But those are the, uh, um, you know, nuggets that I usually put out there to people. It's not uh, something I want you to take at face value. Go do your own research and get your own help. But that is just a nugget. Yeah, Gabriel, um, Gabriel, Gabriel you're right because yeah. I mean, that's a practical example. I got I got a couple of clients who. Who, yes, I have them to register the business. They're doing their work. They're not paying me anything, but they keep the relationship going, right? Because I know they got potential of growth. So I say, okay, when you grow, you know that I'm here. Then you bring the, we start doing the real accounting. Your transactions are not many now. Right. Yeah, so, you, you know, just advisory, like, okay, do this, open this bank account here, do this stuff. So mm -hmm. basically now I'm, you know, I'm building a relationship with you so that, you know, in terms of growth, 
we all grow together, right? Exactly. So, yeah, those yep. things you can keep that relationship. You're you're correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right, let's jump on to the next one. We talk about succession planning. Now, um, it, it, this is still in this line of business, right? Uh, so, succession planning, as, as I say, it's not something when you do, you want to think about later on to say, okay, I'm 10 years in business now, I want to think about succession planning. This is something that you have to do from the beginning. Like the moment you register that company, you know, if you're somebody who is strategic, <clears throat> you're thinking about the strategy of the business, right? At some point in your life, you have to think about <clears throat> how long do I want this company to last? You know, it, as I said earlier, is it just a hand to mouth? Or do I want, when I, you know, when I retire, do I want to pass it on to my children? You know, that's when you have to think about the succession planning. So succession planning is pretty much meaning if something were to happen to you or if you were to retire, who will continue to succeed in your place to continue the mission, the vision, uh, and the ethos of that business, right? Um, so that's that's what I want to talk about. And now, now from it varies from company to company, from industry to industry. I, I will use this. I'll give this one example, and I will pass this on to you. So, uh, I I work in the banking industry, right? Mm -hmm. When the pandemic happened. We didn't. We didn't have any work from home policy. Right? Now you can get it. Now you can get a loan, man. <laughs> <laughs> we do more than give it a loan, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. When the pandemic happened, we did not have. Before the pandemic happened, we did not have any work from home policy. Matter of fact, they they had no policy in terms of how to manage uh, companies' computer outside of the, the work site. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, companies, you know, businesses were shutting down. That's when we had we. Every major company up to from 500 up people up, they have a continuity plan. So once that happened, people start, we started shutting down. People started working from home. The continuity team kicked in, right? So they would send you, perfect example. We live in the Northeast, right? When there's this heavy snowstorm, I don't know about you, but we get texts on our phone. Hey, today we're, we're closing, we're not coming in, right? That's continuity. Oh, the office will be open. They will be having a late opening today because of the snowstorm, right? That's continuity. That's saying that regardless of what has happened, the business is going to continue. The same thing happened during the pandemic, right? Now, depending on how big the company is, they have a whole division dedicated towards that. For business right? So yeah. if there's a disaster was to strike, this is the strategy the company would take on to continue operating. So in essence, that is what business continuity is, right? And succession planning is, right? I would say there's one thing in our land. In addition to that, we also have a CEO succession planning, right? We don't keep CEOs yeah. for over we don't keep CEOs for over 10 years, right? So every CEO that come in, they know they have 10 years to be to be a CEO. In addition to that, while you're there, you'll be grooming your own CEO. If you're not grooming your own CEO by two, three years before your time is over you will help the company start looking for your replacement. That is succession plan. That is long-term thinking, right? So I wanted to leave that out to you before I pass it on to you guys. In our community and people, businesses that you guys have encountered, what are some of the succession planning that you see that people have in place? And where do you think those people are lacking? Any one of you. So, so before we go to that question, though, I wanted to talk about the business continuity plan there uh, because right. I, you know, I've audited a lot of those in the IT world. I will tell you though, a lot of businesses because I was doing the government side before I went to private se sector. Now, there were con business continuity plan for disaster or for you know whatever the kind of things, but it was not for COVID. So what happened was when they sent everybody home. People were taking computers home that were not tracking. Yep. They didn't know where people were working. Mm -hmm. You didn't mm -hmm. even know. Not only the computers, the, the monitors, the accessories, you didn't know what it took on. There was no way because people just left because they had to leave. And so there's no way. And then, obviously, all these applications, the Teams, the Zoom, and all of that, there was no plan for that. So yep. quickly, you know, policies had to be written. 
Yep. Then you have to go back and evaluate those continuity plans because all before that continuity plan was just like, okay, kids are fire here. Yep. We got offshore sites that we can store our data, what basic protected data, but we're yep. not looking at the aspect of people yep. and That's other right. things. So quickly they had to put these policies in place. Just recently they had to, at least for the incident I work with, they had to go back and and, and this is constantly being evaluated. They mm -hmm. had to go back and look at the the the, the plan, not the continuity plan, because they found out that guess what? Because Gabriel is working remotely or Alex Salvina is working remotely. Selvina doesn't tell her boss. She's sitting in Dubai working, even though she's working. Mm -hmm. You're out of the state. You're yeah, out, yeah, of, out right. of the focus point. If right. my boss needs me to come to the office tomorrow for a quick meeting or whatever it is, yeah, I right. cannot because I laying down in Dubai on the bank. I mean, on the beach. <laughs> so they had to, most, most big companies, they had to put that in place that even if you're going to go so far out of the radius or your home, so you have to get approval from your boss. Because guess what? They also don't want to assume from the, from the IT standpoint that I know Gabriel's supposed to be in Boston. Uh -huh. How come this computer is in is in Dubai? So that means who's using that computer? Maybe that's a froster have that computer. So I want to be sure that Gabriel is the person that's logging to that computer and pulling data. Uh -huh. So it's, it's very important. So all of that, they had to work on. They're still working on it, but at least we're at a good place now. Most companies are at a good place where they yeah. got the monitoring, the monitoring at least to 60, if not 80%, but it's a working progress. Yeah. yeah. Alex. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what she's saying that, uh, yeah, I had the same two, two opposite experience, right? The company that I was working for before I moved to Texas, the, the last company I was working for, they had a business continuity plan in place. Mm -hmm. There's this guy, he's in an, this African dude, um, he's from Togo, he's very passionate about business continuity and, and he had, it's like, when when the COVID started, as part of his job, when it started from China and other stuff, the guys started preparing. And when they started hitting America, they, I mean, the guy was already prepared. The guy had the drills and, and stuff like that. So when it hit, when the decision was made in March, mm -hmm. we were just ready to go. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it was, it, he predicted all that and, and he shared his... He, 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 he made all that presentation. On the flip side, the company that brought me to taxi, they didn't have <laughs> nothing, yeah. right? And then, of course, it meant more money, right? They got to pay me additional money for that, the fact that to go to the, I said, well, I can go in the office. My friend will pay you X, Y, Z. I'm like, okay, well, man, that's more bucket. I'll go for it. So, we, I mean, we went for it. We had to take the risk to go to the office, right? But, but again, um, and then eventually they started putting things to place. They gradually started putting things to place and then eventually they sent after a few months, um, almost a year then before um, they started, you know, after a few months they started sending some people home. For me, after about a year before I came home, as, you know, I, I went, you know, working from home, right? right? Um, so yeah, it, it, it can be, a, but on the continual, Continue to side in terms of small businesses. You talk about um, how do you continue a business after yourself, uh -huh. right? After maybe you retired or you you're no more. You know you got to put these things in place, right? Yeah. Um, we we typically say uh, you know in in, a, in our parlance in like grandpa uh, uh, or the African as a whole that the. the, the the papa know the thing, but he ain't teaching all the children, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when he, he passes, he passes with all that knowledge uh -huh. and, and he goes that way and, and, and none of the kids or nobody else can do that. So I I know of you know a few people who, for example, they incorporate their older kids into the business already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I know of somebody who um he's his son is the chief executive of his company. Is the chief executive officer for his company. That's succession planning, right? Long term succession planning. Yeah. So I mean, the guy, the guy plan is my friend. If I reach a certain age, I just want to have fun going on the island, and my son be paying me. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so when we grow this thing, um, again, I would just, I would just sit down and be getting my little thing and, and enjoying myself and be on some island. So, yeah. yeah. So 
you got to, you know, do those kind of planning. You got to, you know, incorporate other people. You got to incorporate as much as possible, you know, trusted people who are willing to do it. Of course, sometimes some of the, some of the children have their own different plans. Mm -hmm. They have their own things they want to do. Um, some of them don't want to be bothered with that stuff. Yeah. But yeah. again, you you got you, you got to put this into besides the the business continuity plan, you know, data recovery and all that stuff. But who continues this thing after succession? Right. You, right. I have an example. When I when I was it's 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 clear. When I was um, just getting back, just my recent position in Liberia, I called my staff. I told them. I have a five-year tenure, right? In fact, on day one, I'm working myself out of the job because I'm used to working myself out of a job since I came back home to Liberia, all right? So I started the succession planning already. I had two streams of succession planning already because either I'll be you know, appointed somewhere else, I'll be appointed by somebody else, or myself just decide to look for a better opportunity and yeah. you know, higher opportunity. So I don't want to just walk away and this, you know, what is there doesn't continue. Mm -hmm. And 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 so I mean personally I do that. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I and you know you gotta give credit to what credit is due is the if you whatever you are, I would say do a perfect, you can look at it, look this up. The Nigerians, right? Whenever you mm -hmm. see a Nigerian store, you go in a Nigerian store, mm -hmm. right? Usually you will see either the mom or the dad in the bag putting stuff on the shelf. There's usually a kid at the register, at the right? Register. After yes. school, right? Mm -hmm. At the register, ringing you yes. up, right? Mm -hmm. They know the prices of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. The Nigerian do that, the, how do you call it? Uh, the the Ghanaian do that too. The Muslim yeah. do that. The Lebanese do that. So if you go in mm -hmm. some of the store, so the, if some of them, they will bring their kids in the store, even if they're not even at the register, they get them acclimated with the business. Mm -hmm. That is, you're planting a seed. Eventually, that's something that kid might gravitate towards. I suppose mm -hmm. you, you're not doing that from the beginning and the kids growing up, they say, you know what? You never brought me around the store. I have different plans, right? So you, you as beginning, that from the early age, you know, sets the tone for for you to be able to pass that pass that business on to them, right? So I, I think this is something that I, you know, when I when, when I was thinking about the topic, I said this is how this is how some of these happen, right? I want to give another example on uh, one of the transactions that I was working on, right? This guy, great grandfather, started a company, 1908. Wow. 1908, his father took it on. Right, if a grandfather took it on, mm -hmm. and then his father took it on, and then they just passed that company. So now, mm -hmm. when I sit in front of this kind of company, I read the history of how that that's those transaction, those transition was made. You mm -hmm. kind of think about how the the level of the conversation those people were having as to, hey, I'm just starting this company, but I can just continue to pass it on. And they're one of the biggest real estate company in the state that I'm in. Like when you talk about all the hotels, major hotels, construction, they have their hands in everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, you know, you read story like that and then you you, you kind of compare that to some of our, you know, uh, you know, how we, how we, how we plan and how we, we don't think about generations. It kind of, you know, it kind of baffles you in terms of the, the, the level of, of intentionality that is put into the business. You know, some people just start business to say, hey, this is hand to mouth. I'm just going to feed myself. And then some people start businesses with intentions. Say, hey, I will grow this thing, retire. I think Alex alluded to that. I'll pass it on to my children. You know, I can be on the beach. They can be, they can put me on salary. Usually what they do as they age is, as they age, right? They start reducing their interest. If the father had 80%, as he aged, he'll start reducing Impossible. it to like 20, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1, you know, just to pass the business on to the, you know, the, the children or the the, uh, the child that is in, in the in the company. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are uh, some of the, um, you know, what I call succession planning that I've, that I've, that I've seen. Um, and, you know, you can, in another way, you can call it business continuity because it, it, it continues well. Um, and you know, let me jump in there because I want to add some examples on that. 
Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm glad you said that because, in, you know, in our setting, we it's easy for us to make will and just send it on to the children, but just prepare. I got a lot of Nigerian friends, but yeah. just preparing the children, our children, and the ones that at least, because some of them, like, you know, they, at least said they got different focus, but the ones that at least, you know, in that direction, but planting them in that direction is very important because mm -hmm. what we usually do is we do this well that say, oh, when I die, it goes to my children. But then what happened when the children, when you die, you get to the children, the children just squander everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, preparing them early, getting them involved in the process, very, very important. I read this story, I think it was about Chick fil A. Mm -hmm. Chick fil A turned the, the association plans to turn, the men turn the business, not to somebody else, the son. And then the church that I go to, I mean, I've been in American church since I've been in America. I'm not ashamed to say that for every state I go to American church. But the church that I go to now in Texas about probably a month or two ago, the pastor announced that, you know, they'll be retiring. And he's, the succession plans to turn the church over to his son. So he got the son on a two-year plan, training the son to be the lead pastor of the church. And this is a mega church in Texas. They got branches all over. But, you know, just talking about how it's very important planning training them too you know it's a gradual path so he got you on the two-year path on top of that he's going to a university in that direction even though he had other degrees but pointing in that direction of business and you know how to be a, a, a pastor and also be a godly person and i have to do business because some people just be pastor but there's a business aspect of being pastor but in that direction and all so it's very important so i think there are a lot of things Tips and like you said, nuggets that we can learn from them too as we go forward. Yeah, including the, the have to be all right in pastor working on that kind of thing. Oh, that one I think that's what different day. That's that's a that's the ethics part of the uh, oh, uh oh, not just ethics but the moral aspect. Yeah, of well, it. Hey, well, we see right here the economy. Can't be God. Let God deal with that aspect. Uh -huh. right. Nobody yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the next aspect, the next thing I want us to talk about is is part of this whole business continuity. Uh it's called, I'm sure you guys heard of it, key person insurance or in I'm trying to be gender neutral here. It's called key man life insurance, but it can be taken on a woman as well. So I call it key person key life person insurance, insurance, right? Um, so key person life insurance technically is usually something you will see with a single member LLC. So let's say Telvi is the only one who runs a company, even though it is all you, if Telvi is the only one who runs a company, even though this is a big company that has about 50 people under her, she is a sole registrant on that company. She is a vice president in terms of what is registered as the secretary of state. She mm -hmm. is the president, uh, secretary, and agent on there. There's nobody else, right? In that case, usually if you go to what we call, it goes solicitate any level of funding at all, that is a risk. And as much that your business could be a sprawling business, you might have three, four, five, uh division you know places everywhere in different states but because you're the sole person in that who is uh in uh who carries the mission the vision the ethos ethos of that company that is a risk right so usually what companies would do in terms of if you go borrow money anywhere i don't care where it is they will ask of you you know that's because that's that tells us that you don't have a succession plan in place Right. In that case, I will come to you and say, Toby, do you have a succession plan in place? Right. Why? Because you're the only when I look up this the reg uh, the secretary of state, you're the only person on there. This doesn't seem like it's God forbid something happened to you. There's nobody else who is can carry on that mission, right? Or carry on the idea of the company. So usually we'll ask for key person life insurance, right? That is the reason why we do that. And that insurance will get pledged to the bank or whatever lending institution you're going to. The reason is if something happened to you, the money I gave you, I don't want it to be off the hook because that is a risk, right? Now, it's either that, because it costs money to, it will cost money for you to get it, right? It's, pretty, yeah, it's yeah. either that, or you can say, I will ask you, I say, if you can draft me a succession plan that explains, you know, if something happened, this is what is going to happen to the business or this is who is going to take on the business, I can waive that, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, Something that we, you know, a lot of people don't talk about for, you know, for those of us who are entrepreneurs or you're starting a company, that's something you want to be thinking about. You know, why get a session plan?
Now, I will say this before I, I, I turn this question over to you. Whatever company you're working for right now, they have a life insurance on you. What do you believe? What do you know? What do you know that or not? They have a life insurance on you. The reason being because if something happened to you, it would take time to hire somebody, right, to bring them on, or they consider you somebody key in that position. So they do have a life insurance on you. So those are some of the purposes of of uh, what I call key person life insurance. You know, that's the reason why you will get it. That's the reason why you put it on yourself. And if you have family as well, if something happened to you, if this was the only source of income that this you guys were getting, your business was the only source of income. If something happened to you, guess what? That means your family is not going to be eating anymore. So if something happened to you, that key person life insurance will cover on that, right? So again, I will pose this question to you guys. I'm sure you guys, uh, you, uh, you do auditing from a private sector, uh, Alex does uh, taxes with businesses. Do you, you know, whether talk to your clients about some of these things, or do you see those level of planning with some of your clients in whether you can speak to the librarian community business as a whole or in business as general? Yeah, um, let me let me jump to that. There's the maybe Tevi would know more than I do, but um, in that in that area, but um. What I do know of, and in fact, personally, I guess um, I just changed my whole insurance portfolio and stuff like that um, because um, I won't go into the details, but there's there are other things that you have to include just in case. It's insurance is all about just in case, just in case, right? Mm -hmm. So typically, an insurance depends on the amount you want to pay. You can have different riders, for example, to include. Okay, if something happened to you. Will you get your house paid off? Will you get this thing paid off? Will you get all your debt paid off? Um, so you insure as much as possible, so that um, and 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 so that when anything happens, you know, eventually, and we're not talking about insurance here, but if anything happens, eventually, you 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 know, you get um, your loved ones covered, right? And but as far as advising businesses, like okay. All this stuff you have, you know, it's it's in it's a good it's a lesson for me, mm -hmm. right? Um, that um, we got to start looking at. That um, um, even though um, continuity in in a sense that you got other things in place, mm -hmm. um, but advising clients to take um, what man insurance? How you call it? Key man, key man, key man insurance. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm 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 learning. That one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Javi. So, so I, I don't get involved with all of that as well as, you know, on a personal level, because right. I don't, I don't get involved with, you know, library businesses and stuff. Uh, some, every now and then somebody will ask me for my view on auditing when I used to do government auditing, you know, just to, some people, somebody will call me and say, you know, look, government, but I don't audit my agency, you know, what do you think? Especially when I used to work for HHSC ORG, I used to get that a lot. But I don't. But I will tell you though, um, on a professional level, um, I, a lot of our audits, uh, even even now in the private sector, because we do with, uh, you know, we do work with third parties. Um, mm -hmm. So you look at those contracts. The contract with them require them to have you know, insurance because of the kind of business that we do with them, you know, mm -hmm. you know how about, I don't know if it's key, man, whatever it is, but we, as part of the audit work, we have to review all of that. You know, got to look at the continue, business continuing plan. We got to look at the disaster recovery plan, all those things. Those are key things on the checklist that we got to go by. We got to, so what kind of audit is like a must do. Yeah. yeah. Must have. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I agree with you. Um, yeah, but Gabriel, let me let me ask you a question. The reason the reason like uh, I just you know what Tevi said brought something in my mind. Like even even if you're taking a mortgage, right? Yeah. Yeah. The reason why the insurance is part of the law, right? It's part of the regulation yeah. that you 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 take an insurance, and yeah. you if you don't take the insurance, you can even the driving a car, right? And the, the the people that you're taking a loan from, the bank, the financing company that you're taking a loan from, insists that you have, you know, um, depending on the car it is, yeah. you have maybe full coverage, 
uh, yeah. because they're trying to protect themselves, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Now, you you know, as a banker, your bank is also because you're lending money to a cup company. You're lending huge amount of money to a company, and maybe the company is a single person LLC or it's just two or three person. You know, so who are the key players? In order that we pro we protect ourselves as a bank, just in case the person drops one day and something happened to them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that um, that insurance will be able to pay us. But how far does that go in our line of business? Uh, Terry say I don't do a lot. Remember, we we for us we deal with different uh, businesses in different geography, whether it's you know Hispanic, whether whatever. As long as it's whether it's um, West African, Liberian, Nigerian, we deal with different businesses. Kenyans, uh, Cameroonians, yeah. we deal with different business. So. I'm not lending out money, right? And yeah. so at what point do I now advise my client, say, my friend, go take key person insurance? So let me put it this way. In, okay. in, I will, And I will add to what I said earlier. In as much, it could be a single member LLC, right? Mm -hmm. That means just you on that registration, right? What? It goes beyond that, right? So it could be you and Telvi in a partnership. Mm -hmm. what usually happens you will take insurance on yourself and tell you will take insurance on herself of course yeah. that is yes that's because you guys are cross what we call cross collateralized you're protecting each other mm -hmm. right if something happened to this guy because you know how important tell is to the business continuing and tell mm -hmm. know how important you are right so if something happened to alex god forbid you know hypothetically now right I tell V will want to make sure that she has enough capital that your role, your responsibility doesn't deplete, like she's not focusing on replacing Alex that to the point it now threatened the existence of the business. So this is why usually it goes beyond the, the single member LLC. So it could be instead of you, just you running the company, have a single person LLC on you. If there are two people in there or two or three people, they will have insurance on each other. Now, <laughs> There's there's <laughs> there's risks to that. There's there's stories. If you watch the discovery, there's stories where people know that they have insurance. Partners, business partner know they have insurance on each other. Somebody go and take out the other person. There's been stories like that, right? But from an honest perspective, in terms of an honest standpoint, a I don't know if I'm answering your question. It goes beyond the single member LLC as well. Now, in terms of at what point do you advise your client? I think it it goes to the discovery conversation. So let's say, tell me what's your client, you come in your office and you say, oh, you know, how long have you been running a company? I've been running it for such and such. How many people are in it, right? Now you now go into, you know, why is it she's running the company? What are the money, the income that she's getting from there? What are that is feeding her family? When you, once you understand that aspect, then that's when you can recommend that, right? Even though you won't be telling her to buy it, you can recommend that. She can recommend her to an insurance agent to to help her with that. Because you know that the the profit that Telvi is making from there, the money that she's making from that business, is not just to sustain her, but it's to, to sustain her family. And if God forbid something were to happen to her, that could mean an entire family that is off the hook of, you know, their livelihood is off the hook. At that point, you can recommend that and say, hey, I think this is something you might want to do, not just protect the business, protect the assets within the business. So that's enough for you guys that have a business. That's something you want to protect as well, like your house, your the assets of the business, all of those things. You can do a deep discovery and recommend her to a, an insurance agent, somebody who can be able to help her to, to protect this thing. Because if something happened, you want to make sure that she's covered and the family that are involved or all partners within that business are covered as well. Yeah. Again, I mean, again, I started on the note that, um, yes, it's, it's, it, it would be something for me to learn, but, um, you know, not to prolong this topic. They, I will understand it. You are a banker. I understand it from the bank's point of view mm -hmm. that um, if key people are in the business, the bank doesn't want to lose out. Um, yeah. But, from our side, for example, if you run a consulting business, if, if Telvi myself running a consulting business, mm -hmm. uh, which does not require a lot of capital outlay mm -hmm. in terms of investment, um, you know, how will um, 
getting a key person um insurance you may not business. you may not need it you may not need it mm -hmm. You definitely may not, and that's what I said. It depends on the level of complexity of role that, let's say, Telvi. I'm keep using you and Telvi as Telvi may have with your your business that you guys are running. So let's say you and Telvi running a consulting firm, and you know, let's say you're the financial person, and Telvi is the operational aspect. You have no idea of the operation. Maybe you from a, a gross level, you can have that conversation, but in terms of detail, you don't. Hypothetically, it tells you. Well, how, how does the the insurance that you're getting the insurance? If something happened to that's what to I'm me, getting to now, right? Yeah. So how hypothetically, does that insurance money fill out that gap now? Okay. So hypothetically, I say Telvi leaves the company. Mm -hmm. She say, "I'm moving to California. I won't be able to work with you anymore." How would you feel Telvi's role, right? Let's say so, not moving, but something happened to her, right? How would you feel? How would you feel her role? Right now, some the government something have happened to her. You can collect that key pressing insurance money that it will give you to be able to now use it to have hire somebody who is of Telvin quality mm -hmm. to continue to help you run the business. Because if you drag that long for a long time, it just might you know end up you going bankrupt because you may not have you know the the, the skill set that Tevi had that complemented yours for you to continue running that business. So those are some of the reasons why people do that. But as I said, there's risk to it. People know they have partners on insurance on each other. They go, they take out the other partner. So those are, you know, things that people, mm -hmm. so usually people get into it. They would do it secretly without their part, their firm knowing. Let's say I, I have a partnership with Tevi. I will get one on myself without Tevi knowing, but I'll put the business as the, uh, what we call it, uh, the designee, right? The assignee on that. On that. So if something happened to me that money goes to the, the, the business, you know, um, but yeah. Yeah. Insurance business guys on downside. Yeah. So. So you can talk to Bob. What's his name? Bob play, right? Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Really? He will, yeah. he will expand on that on your, in terms of the key man uh, perspective. Okay. I mean, I can only talk to at a surface level. I can recommend it because right. uh, license. Yeah. All right. Um, so the, I, I think what time do we have here? Well, it's it's almost an hour. Right. So, um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe we should go for a break and then come back to comments. And all that. <laughs> and yeah, play, 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 the, play the commercial. Play the commercial. Yeah, yeah. Watch the break, yeah. Play, play the commercial and play it. <laughs> let's 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 go for a break. We come back. I'll take it. I'll take it. Huh? We, 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 we I'll take a break. I, yeah. I gotta take a drink already. So let's <laughs> why why you play the commercial? Let's take a let's take a drink. I got my my late thing here. I want to drink. You know what I'm saying? What, what's your you have a you have a, a thing, right? Uh commercial. Yeah, look for it somewhere there. Okay. All right. We we're, we're, we're taking a few minutes break and we'll come back, then we'll dive into the uh, the next yes. session of the show. Uh we wanna look at you know example of business continuity. Uh we wanna look at Kobe Bryant. Um, he has a venture capital firm, um, you know, when he passed away, what happened to that? Um, and we also want to talk about something that is very hot, which is the Spoon Network debacle that is happening. You know, how do you plan before crisis? How do you plan during crisis? And uh, how do you plan for business continuity post crisis? So I, I think so stick around for that. I think that will be something interesting. Um, for now, just give us a quick minute. Yeah. Allen Bernard International, or ABR, is a management consulting firm with a team of consultants and associates who focus on growing and transforming home healthcare agencies, nonprofits, and small businesses in other industries as well as individuals. Our services include ABR Business Support Services, ABR Accounting and Tax Services, and ABR Anti Money Laundering Compliance Services. At ABR, we bring to each assignment dedication and commitment, experience and skills, performance-based process, integrated solution teams, and client relations. For more inquiries on our services, call phone number 469-378-3955. That's Allen Bernard International or ABR, transforming business through ideas.
at Focus on Liberia, we discuss everything Liberia, from education to politics, arts and culture, entertainment, agriculture, history, religion, family, and technology. Focus on Liberia uncovers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia, and I am Dennis Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Focus on Liberia on the Marketplace, where we talk everything finance, business, and economics. Today's topic is business continuity, uh, succession planning, uh, and the whole nine yards that has to do with business. I know how do you plan your business? How do you make sure that business lives up to you? Uh, and how do you go about doing that strategic things that you need to do either at the beginning or do, throughout the process of the business to make sure that that business continue to exist um, after you retire or after you pass on. So that's what we're talking about today. The first session of the show, we talked about you know the structuring, we talked about the succession planning, uh, how to separate uh, the business from yourself. So if something happened, you're not held liable for it. It could be on the business. Uh, we also talk about key person uh, insurance, you know, what it is, why you should get it, and uh, uh, you know how to use it is something where it happened. Um, so the next session of the show that we want to talk about is, um, you know, we we typically when we talk about the, the what we talk about on the show, we like to give proper, you know, real world examples. So we want to take maybe two or three of them to talk about that, right? And one of the ones we want to talk about is something that is currently happening within our community right now. If you guys have been following the news with the whole uh, indictment of Spoon Network, where their CEO was, you know, uh, indicted allegedly for issuing, you know, fake diplomas, right? Um, but that's not what we want to focus. What we want to focus is the the business itself. Now that the, you know, what is happening to him what is happening with the business is what we want to look at. You know, I know maybe some of you came out here and want to hear that aspect of it. When I hear that's a legal case, I still ongoing. We just want to look at what is happening with the business, right? Why succession planning is important um, and why you should start thinking about that yourself. You know, if you do have a business, what do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? You should, those are things you need to start thinking about, right? So as you guys are aware, you know, the network, the CEO was, you know, allegedly indicted uh, for whatever crime he's com he, he's alleged, been alleged to commit. Um, but what we want to look at is the the continuity of the network itself. And I know if you guys are familiar with the, the network, they have uh, one in the United States. They also have the Spoon Radio in Liberia as well, right? Um, so what I want to do today is put you guys in in his shoe. That's going to be tough, right? That's going to be very tough to put yourself in, the, in his shoe. If you, from a business, put your business hat on now, right? If you were someone as a CEO of that network being enrolled within what is happening right now, from a business planning, business continuity standpoint, what are the top three things that you would do right now to make sure that your business continue to exist, it continue to thrive, and in a way also kind of separate yourself from it? Any one of you, just leave the legal aspect part of it. We're not talking about that. Just put your business hat on as a CEO of a company involved in crisis right now. What is What are the top three things you're doing or three, top four things you're doing. Alex, I'm tired going first. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, first of all, let me let me let me issue the disclaimer. Um you know what is happening this Canton with this spoon is it, it's not something that um um that uh people should celebrate 
um, and then so um, and then you know I I don't want to be put in the, the position or be seen as somebody who's celebrating something that that befell somebody or befell somebody. And then secondly, uh, we are a network as well, and and the um, Spoon uh, Network is is also a network. So. Uh, in as much as these things have been discussed, I mean, it's all over the news, it's all over um, the local news, the CNN, the CNBC, all the different news. So uh, we are no, uh, uh, no uh, um, exception to discuss it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we just you know, tread carefully in how we, we have those conversations. So I just wanted to put that out there. So, uh, in terms of succession planning, first, it is unfortunate that um, things will happen. So, I'll give an example. So, um, like I say, in the tax preparation business also, people lend themselves into um, doing wrong things, right? Um, yeah, cook the box. Cooking the box. And, and um, like I said, there's one case of... Uh, it, it lady name is in public information. I saw it on the, the Department of Justice website. Um, <clears throat> I read through it. And then there's another one where, I mean, fact, my business became, it benefited from some of that, like some of the clients coming over. You got um, indicted? Yeah, they, they got bad. You got indicted? No, no, I said my oh, business okay, benefited. Okay. That's what I'm all right, all right, all right. It, no, no, that's my area. Don't, don't be that one to me. <laughs> It's not my push up, please. Now you're a push up. <laughs> okay, I'm a push up. <laughs> well, anyway, go I, ahead. I, I just I need to I benefit my business. My clients. My clients. Right, coming your client, from client from okay. Yeah, that uh, they, you know, setting, you know, tax preparer were bad from, from um, preparing taxes because yeah, they, yeah. over the years they've been involved in, mm -hmm. in paddling um, tax returns for money. Mm -hmm. And then what they also did was they, they also were, Inflicting the the beside inflicting the, the tax return, they were doing that with the benefit of taking money from these people's tax return, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, for example, you're supposed to get one thousand back, and they make you get maybe ten thousand back by preparing certain forms that are you know, and then behind there they use certain things, uh, bank products and other things to take maybe uh, five thousand from you. From your tax return, all you know, you got five thousand and you relax. Sometimes they don't even give you your tax return back, right? So, and over the years, you'll be investigated, you'll be traced, your thing will be tried because, especially now, now with the IRS hiring, the Department of uh, Treasury hiring more than eighty percent to look at taxes. Especially now that the, the pandemic time is over. Yeah. Because they were washing the economic stimulus, they were washing the child tax credit and the, 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 uh, um, um, all this stuff. But now they are looking at other things. So, they did, and then they strengthen their software, the data analytics, the artificial intelligence is working more. So they can connect the dots. So uh, again, um, they will be coming down a lot of people. So um, people just have to be careful. Right, because so when it was succession planning, right. once once the guys were caught, their whole business died down. Nobody to pick up the pieces. Okay. Yeah, nobody to pick up the pieces because the key individuals in that in those businesses were bad from issuing and preparing tax returns. Right. So you can imagine what would happen to them because the life they were living, right? The income they were getting, the life they were living, their families and stuff like that. Now they can't get that money again. They may they have to do something else. And if they go to court, for example, they might get felony, they might get this, and it goes after them, right? They, they may not be able to do something else, okay? So um, if you put that back into the topic we're discussing with what is happening with the issue of the the schools that were issuing these um these uh um um, um you know degrees all right um and you get inducted you get um the reason why i feel you know i feel for um the individual 
is because if anything happened, right, uh, there's a lot that's left on the table. And what I'm saying, I don't want us to talk about him because I think it gets sensitive. But okay, what yeah. would you do? What are the, let's say that was your company mm -hmm. and that happened to you. You know, it's been alleged, you haven't been arrested, you're running a company. What are you doing? What are the three things, the next three things that you're doing to make sure that this company that Alex Coffee is running doesn't break down after me, but it continues? What mm -hmm. is, what, what steps are you going into? You know? So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard to say, determine on the normal circumstances, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On the normal circumstances, it comes back to succession planning, right? Perfect. Yeah. What would what three things would I do, or what right. three things am I even considering doing in my business, right? Like we said, um, you have other partners, right? Right. Partner yeah. with other people. Yeah. That also can pick pick up from where you start, right? If anything happens to you, um. Even if you, you got involved in, in, in criminality, right? And you are bad or you know you you know you came down with felony and you can't do certain things again, then your partners may continue if it's not the company. Mm -hmm. Because if it's also involved the company, they're going to squash the company as well. Yeah, yeah. Now, if it doesn't involve the company, your partners can carry on. Like we said also involve your your your, your kids mm -hmm. okay involve your kids into the business and if you something happened to you they can they can um they can carry on the business right but um but you know let me let me allow tell you to tell me okay. <laughs> <laughs> alex oh, have, be, yeah. alex have Beat Alex. around the bush, though. You can't beat around the bush. No, you're just trying to hard. Yeah. No, 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 I will no, give no. that to you. We're not for the listing on Piggy. And let me just tell you, we'll call it for what it is. This is tell me not. You know, we'll see it on the professional side, but we'll call it for what it is. Mm -hmm. At least, yeah, I'll call it for what it is. Um, we, you know, we're not going to say the indictment was alleged. It wasn't. It was an indictment, but the, the charges in there, yes, it's alleged. alleged. Right. But the indictment, not alleged. We'll call yeah. it for what it is. Um, as far as succession planning, and before, in the interest of full disclosure, some things I don't like to say, but I think I'll say just for the importance of the discussion. I carry a certified for examiner license. I've carried that for over 15 years and work in that profession. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I have a master's over 13 years ago in forensic studies with emphasis on investigations. Mm -hmm. Three, one of the entities that brought charges on the, HSSC Office of Inspector General, I worked with at least that one of them, the one that is in Texas. I worked yeah. with them for almost three years doing audit of nursing homes, hospitals, Medicare, Medicare fraud. So I've seen it both. And be, other than that, I carry a license, like uh, a nursing license. I don't talk about it because I don't practice nursing like that. Mm -hmm. You know, in at one point in my life, you know, when I was doing it part time, I was doing alcohol and drug rehab and all of that. But for the most part, I do all the thing. And now, if you're, I, just, you're I, teaching I, alcohol when you're doing nothing. Yes, and I was the nurse and I was the patient at the same time. <laughs> 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 no, all that serious. No, so that's right. my focus. A little bit of geriatrics. And all of this I'm saying is I've seen it on both ends. I've seen right. it doing all the thing. I've seen it the government regulatory aspect and all of this. Yeah. So as far as succession planning. First thing here is, is finding somebody that can really lead at this point. Perfect. Yeah. Really lead. Yeah. It's not just anybody, the children. Because first of all, the children are already focusing on college right now. One of the daughter trying to, I think, trying to go to medical school. This is all public information because something yeah. what Mr. Wallace will say on his show. One yeah. of the daughter, I think she's a nurse, so she's trying to get to a nursing school or doctor. The son is focusing on the day. But even if you delegate people to do it, are there people honest enough? Are they able to carry your vision that you always have and the vision for your plan? This man got big plans and big dreams. I've talked to him many times before when we used to have conversation. I just had to draw my line because of certain professional reasons. And, and, and I'm not going to discuss all of that. Right, just, right. You know. Right. But so he has big dreams. Nothing wrong with it. He's a young man, a vicious man. So that's why I put. 
funny person that will carry your dream, that will carry your or your you know your dream for your for your brand, for your network, for all your all your different businesses. We know about you know the different radio stations, but there are other businesses. Some of them he's talked about on the network. Some of them is not you know it's public information. Can they truthfully carry all his succession? Not not just the wife, but somebody who can really carry on that business success. So it's important. Also, you know, we talk about three things. Two, retention of your staff is important. Yep. This man had a lot of overhead, yep. a lot of overhead, unnecessary staff, including a bunch of, I call them lazy bunch of lazy men behind him. <laughs> that behind you whole day because he gave me that small, small money at the end of the yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. The card note. I stopped. I chopped and finish. Have to support their lifestyle because the lazy, they don't want to work like Alice or Gabriel, the one hand now. I'm saying it. Because wow. a half body man will not be behind your friend whole day that the someone yeah, else will be yeah. I talk, I'm talking. I'm talking. Uh -huh. yeah. So he has a lot of overhead. But unnecessary. Cut, unnecessary or so cutting by no overhead. Keeping essential staff is important at this point. Let yeah. me look at my staff. Let me look at essential staff. Who do I need to keep now to keep my business running? Because right now I need to go on a small scale. This is big. We're looking at only federal. That's not all to it. Federal get you. I used to do some of those audits. It was a very HHSC. Mm -hmm. We do one. We will tell you over to, 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 to Attorney General, and then a group come for you, regulation come for you, state mm -hmm. program for you. They all the yeah. nurses, then what they're taking their license. They say, you know what? I thought I was going to nursing school for them to give me my degree. I didn't know that school was fraudulent. Well, you're right on the bus. You got a class action lawsuit coming there, civil lawsuit. They will show yeah. you there. Then they got the defense lawyer. They already that would throw life for them. So this is a spot or this is an auto pause, whatever. What you want to term it is going to go on and on. But yeah. so put it back on your cost, on your overhead, so that you can, you know, to be able to manage some of these liabilities or all these type of things, or even yourself to keep your overhead. You, you know, the lifestyle too, you know, so cutting back on a lot. I'm sure this thing they didn't did it just happen overnight. Where government auditing you, you know, they write you a, a, a letter. They write you a letter. I've been in order where I lead audit, plan, implement, report. We lead that we tell the client, we send you an opening letter. You are being audited for this. And so. so, this is something coming, but I think I just for again from my experience. I think they thought it would have given the, you know, he has the money to hire the best lawyer. They thought it would have just, it would have resolved on, yeah. you know, in the down low without coming to the public. They right, didn't right, see right. the magnitude of it, but that's beyond the lawyers pocket right, right. now. Right. So, but planning, you know, like I said, retention and scaling back on your staff, keeping essential staff is important. The third thing I want to talk about is branding. Yeah. A conversation that I had with that gentleman about branding when he was on that path for this whole criminal CDC government. I'm not ashamed to say it, but we had a class. Oh, yeah, yeah, no whole boss. Right. I'm not ashamed to say it about branding because you know what? I used to be, if people that know me, I used to go on that channel sometimes. Mm. I cut it off. I got my reputation to protect. I got licenses to protect. I don't get for Facebook nonsense. You know, excuse my language if I say nonsense, but not cost. So oh, I had to gosh. think about what was in my bank insurance. What do I have to lose? Repetition yeah. damage. Yep. Risk is very important. They're two cents, five cents. Yep. Sometimes we just look at it, small, small money. But our reputation counts a whole lot. And our professional condition that we suffer for in this country here mm -hmm. is important. But branding is very important at this point. You know, yesterday I looked at the channel briefly. Somebody sent me the link. Spoon at a given time used to be 3,000, 2,500 watching. Yesterday, when somebody sent me the link, it was about nine something. Mm. It can't even take up yet. That just because of the noise two days, That's there were about 970 damage. people watching. Yeah. That's already repetitional damage right there. Mm -hmm. So now it's branding. You got business loss and all of that because now people, even if they can't even go to a court, you have people that, mm, I don't want to do business. I don't say the mean what in, you know, yeah. uh, this fraud, this fraud, even though I allege business people start joining. We saw that way with the Kathy Myers when she, when I think came out in Liberia. Yeah. All the PB companies that she was doing business with, all yeah, everybody no started jumping back. Yep. Everybody started jumping back. Like, uh, uh, uh. We know how it is. Before the case came in, go. 
when it starts, when it, they, they, I, I, I don't want to be involved. Who yeah. comes to what or deal with somebody who in trouble with the law? Nobody. Yeah. So there's a lot of laws there. So I think branding is very important. And not just coming on the show to just say, <laughs> you know, to save face. We all can't kind of save face, mm -hmm. you know. So people know how to, you know, pull out a, what is it, facade or whatever it is. That's not it. That's not about, but branding is very important at this point. It leads a lot of work getting getting to your stakeholders. Besides that, there are a lot of people he does business with because of the radio station, people advertise on his show. Mm -hmm. But getting to those people and trying, I don't even know how he will save the brand, but some kind of way, but branding, they got people who are expert in that. They can help me. I'm not a brand expert, but the, the brand will, will, they will have to rebrand a whole lot. Yeah. A whole lot. And now it, they have to start sooner than later. So yeah. those are the three, and I will stop right there. Man, that is beautiful, beautifully put. Yeah. And and you, I, you I like that three. I said that was yeah. I think I, I think I like how she how she came out. I think I poked at her, and she just came out like wow. Yeah, that's what I mean. I've you, never you, I've never seen her being this lively. Oh, <laughs> 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 to 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 pick it back on what you were saying, I agree with you, especially on the reputation side. There's something my mom always says. She said, "There's there's God, there's family." And the third one on the line is your reputation and your career. The moment somebody starts playing, you gotta guard those things like 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 a hawk, right? So I, I agree with you what you talk about when you talk about you know the reputation part where you know the branding part, his image and all of that. People just, I don't I don't know I don't know this guy from Adam. You know, I don't know him, I don't know his uh, I don't even watch the unfortunately I don't even watch the spoon uh, stuff. Um so I don't know him. But you know, for me, as somebody from a business standpoint, if I were doing that, and this is why I think it, it's important what we talked about early. Those are the things you got to think about from the beginning, right? These are things he should have to ask, especially somebody like you say he has a big vision, right? If you had a big, you have a big vision like that, you have to think about succession planning, right? You have to think about strategy, like you said, people who understand this thing. Hey, if something happened, these are the steps that I need to take. You know, for me, I think. From, even if he didn't do that, right? For me, if I were in his shoe right now, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure is the the, the nursing company is a separate whatever I, I, is a separate company is it, not co mingling with the, the spoon network, right? Which is the one that he goes on, right? How do you separate those two? If they are not separated, yeah. how do you go into that to be separated? Right. I beg you, I beg you. This one is very important. I think go I right need to, but let me bring go you in. Yeah, go ahead. Self auditing. The fact that you've been, you've already got this, you get your staff for those different, your different, your, your agency and your different businesses. Yep. You yep. start doing your own internal audit. Yep. Start auditing now. Make sure you're meeting federal, everything they have done. Go back, hire our auditors, independent party, not even us, independent party. Let them look at your process. For about three years, all the papers you file, everything self audit because it doesn't stop here. This is just the beginning of your trouble. It yeah. doesn't stop here, especially from a government standpoint. I'm not saying it for the place of hate. That yeah. what people are gonna understand. I'm saying it from a professional standpoint. standpoint I have yeah. seen it. I have been part of those processes in America, not in a bureau. Mm -hmm. So I know it doesn't end here. Yep. And I'm sure Alex can bear me, or even though he tried it lightly with this, but from yeah. a professional standpoint, it doesn't start here. Yep. It doesn't stop here. It's going to go on. It's going yep. to go on. So yeah, but, clean but, your books now, cleaning your processes, doing your yep. own internal audit, buy a register from a good firm who can certify your books and say, you know what? Why this was going to get out, you know, audit, and this it is. Okay. They didn't file this right. Okay, they person here. Mm, let me let me correct it with the agency because you know what? By the time federal government finished state government, the other agency, all the records that you fire department, all they did, one away got no business. Everybody picking fire up. department, fire department in the TMO. I, I, I'm just using the habit of I mean, yeah. everybody now looking for something to put on the other plane just because you're yeah. in the news. Everybody yeah. going to call it, they're just teaching the other objective, but everybody going to pick their own from there. Yeah, everybody. No, but, no, but I've, 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 on a on a most serious note, we've seen a lot of uh, whether individuals or businesses go down as a result of these kind of things. So, it, it, the good points you mentioned, 
Um, again, the reason why uh, I'm a little tired tone because the, you know, there are things that I that um, we do, but so let me come back to some of these things. I, I mean, in this situation, how do you rebrand? How do you save repetition damage? How do you? I, I think it starts with how big is the company itself? Now, one of the things that Telvi mentioned is there's unnecessary overhead. And one of the things I want to talk about is how leverage is this company? When I mean how leverage, how much debt does he have? Does he have enough capital aside to be able to now fight these allegations and go through this lawsuit and do some of the things that Telvi talked about in terms of doing his own internal audit? You know, does he have that mon type of money aside? The, is that company, as I said earlier, is it from a legal structural standpoint, is it separated from himself, right? How many people does he have in terms of the registration? Is he the only person that's on that registration? Because if not, the, when, the, when the Fed are done with him, he's going to be like a chicken with all his Fed plug. It will plug him, right? To the, when they're done, that company is going to go bankrupt, right? Does that, so do, how many people register on that company? Is he the, the, the president, the secretary, the, the, the sole person that runs that company? If not, can he, I think Telvi talk about delegation. Can he delegate some of those responsibilities to the next person who's with him on that, right? If not, that means when they're done, that company is going to be bankrupt. And if there's any signs of commingling of funds, whether it's from the the nursing company or the the, the, the and 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 the, the the spoon network itself, they will trace it. And if there's commingling of it, they will now link it to that uh, TV network or whatever it is that he runs. Will, they will drag it right in there. And by the time they're done, if you don't have a good structure, you don't have a good team in place to run it, to take on your vision, let's say if they're dragging you along with it, that means you, you're, you're done. We've seen this example recently. I don't know if you guys on social media, there was this restaurant that a lot of people go to in Liberia that just closed because of the owner passing, right? That's, again, from a continuity standpoint. You don't tell people your vision. You don't bring people on board because you're afraid or whatever the case may be. The moment something happened to you, it is the end of that so for him i i, I don't want to give him advice but i think most of the thing that tovi says i think if i were him those i will go into like this the fifth gear right now and start getting stuff done you know as long as you're not trying to hide things from them just do a self audit don't hide anything because you hide it accountants are good they will trace it and find it just do that and do yourself audit and and just like what they then let the chips fall where they may but if you didn't plan from the initially from the beginning you didn't structure your company from the beginning as to where it's supposed to be in terms of from a succession standpoint there's nothing you can do to save face right now because they will plug everything and as i said god forbid it there's co-minglings of fun and and they were dragging your other entities as well yeah and you you know another mistake that we make us as africans and i'll talk about us that when we get audited or the feds are coming out or state are coming out, we start moving our things to Liberia. Uh -huh. We make a mistake. That's a huge mistake. Well, guess what? I have your bank statement for two, three years. Before the audit started, the first thing we grab. So that money that you transfer in, anything that had that tied to your tax ID, whether Got business it. or personal, we already not call it in. When I used to be in government, I say we are not into that anymore. But I'm just telling you, as an auditor. So you waste your time. When you say you're moving it to your girlfriend account, you're moving it to that place. Once we see that heavy money going to this place, all that, whatever it is, that's it. we fall in that money path. Okay, show our proof, the reason, and blah, blah. So all that money, they're moving up and down, or and not, it's late. Mm -hmm. It's late. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. I absolutely agree. Um, Alex, you have anything before I want to bring up the second example? Yeah, move to the next one. <laughs> I, knew you were, I know you were going to say move to the you next one. Uh, I talked for Alice and today. I talked for Alice and Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alice, uh, uh, I mean, uh, thank, thank you, Tavi, for redeeming me. Yeah. Guys, it's okay. We know. We, we, we know that's why. why. Um, that's why we're happy here today. That's why we're happy we have you here today. <laughs> and the, the other example, the contrary. So with this is the... The, what I call the, the 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 worst case scenario. Now you can look at the 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 base the the up case the the upside scenario, right? Kobe Bryant, 
uh, I think he passed away in 2020, right? This is a guy, one of the best, probably number two basketball player of all time, right? Best basketball player of all time. In addition to that, he was also a, a savvy business guy as well, even though for him, he wasn't putting his business out there, but I follow his business dealing a lot, right? He has a, what we call a venture capital firm. Venture capital is a company that invests in other startups and, and scale them. And, and usually if they take them public, they sell them, right? He has, he has a, he has a company, right? In addition to his basketball career. Now for him, that company still exists. They call it Brian Stiebel, right? He started it with two brothers, uh, Brian and the Stiebel uh, brothers, right? That company still exists. It's continuing way after him. His, I think his wife was involved. There's, I think there's probably 10 founders there, right? So that's a, a, like an abstract, uh, what do you call it? A night and day situation where if you plan better, something happened to you, your company go on, there are people that are still continuing your vision, it's still going, it's still running. Um, while on the other hand, if you don't plan better, something happened to you because you were the only person who was the face of that entity, it could mean, you know, once you're done, that company is done, it's going under as well, that, it, it, it won't exist anymore, you know. So that was the other example that I wanted to give in terms of how important succession planning is and how important it is to do. Whether you're just starting out, you might think I this is a hand to mouth business. I'm starting put in the right structure. You don't know if that thing will catch on, it will scale, it will become a big company and you will want to now start looking at it from a generational standpoint um, uh, in terms of leaving a, a, a legacy as well. So that's uh, the, the, the two uh, exam example there, you know, especially the one we just talked about and then there's the Kobe Bryant um, incident, Kobe Bryant case as well. So, um, from I, I don't want to go back on this whole uh, Stanton case, right? Um, from because I see a lot of people let, still don't go back. Let's move forward. <laughs> I know it's not driving your conversation today. <laughs> I know me. I know you wouldn't want to, and I know, yes, understand yes. why. <laughs> the, the reason why, listen, I I and to be honest with you, I felt the same way. I don't think if something happens to somebody. We should celebrate them. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I, I I share something like that in the chat, right? I don't I don't I don't think he's committed the worst of crime. You know, the reason why I say that because if you go to New York, the next time you're in New York, any of you guys on the show, you see those skyscrapers you see in our well, no, we, got, we got two more minutes though. Yeah, that why mm -hmm. hold on. We're not taking calls there. Right. We're not taking cost today. The skyscraper you see no. in New York, those skyscrapers you see in New York, most of them were built by mafias. Mm, I heard. Yes, right. The Gambino, the 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 the, the uh, for Nazis families, they said a whole lot of them that were, that, that built those. They used to they had connections in the in the FBI, the police, everywhere you think about on the Port Authority. So when those contracts came out to come out to build those skyscrapers, they would intimidate people and get those contracts. You know who went after them and got them? Rudy Giuliani, the ex-mayor of New York. That's how he got his name. He was able to go America's, after those people. America's mayor. Yes, <laughs> he was able to go after them and bring those people down, oh. right? Some of those people are sitting in witness protection as we speak. Like when I mean mobsters and you can think about them, right? So. And when we talk about hundreds of millions of billions of dollars, so whatever is in Stanton's, in, in terms of Stanton's case, he just needs the right team of lawyers and they need to look about the right strategies, understand first what the prosecution team wants, whether they're looking to stop that fraudulent or they want to make an example out of him and then they can go and, and, and partner with that. But I don't think that's something we should all should be celebrating. No. Um, as uh, before, I, I would say this before I land, before I started working into finance, I used to work for a company called Community Resources, which just it's been way over five years now, so I can talk about it. Before then, you have a five-year time, you couldn't talk about any of the cases, right? I used to send people to jail. 
I used to track mobsters, like people like the ex mayor of Providence, the Hells Angels, the biker boys, the biker gangs, their bosses, like everywhere in the entire New England area, right? One of the, I was, and this, this, I think it was a threat when he said it at the time. I didn't catch on to it until three years later. One of the things one of the guys said to me was that, and that's the reason why I don't want to laugh at this guy in his situation. Mm -hmm. You are just one mistake away from being on the other side of the law. You are just one piss off, like somebody pissing you off and you reacting the right, the wrong way from being on the other side of the law, right? He said, in an instant, right? You wrong decision. Or you hanging out with the wrong people can put you on, on the other side of the law. So don't see yourself that you, you're nicer than me, right? Right. right? When he said that thing, I was in the middle of writing him off his third write up that's supposed to just call, pick up the phone, call the marshals, and they were going to take him back to prison. I dropped that pen, I ripped up that paper. That's why you don't laugh at people in that situation because mm -hmm. you're no better than anybody. This is why I'm not, when people, they, they, you go on our social media, they, you know, tearing this guy up. Yes, what he did was wrong. The people that he did that was wrong. But let him bear his cross. He take it. If he does, he plan better. That's up to him. That's not my place for me to judge him. So exactly. that's that's why I'll well leave it on that. Right. I, I agree. I think and, and I think there's no off place as professional to judge. And some people look at it from the political spin. Right. And for us, I, at least for me, I'm not looking for that point because I have seen where even and I will call them the Nigerians. Yep. where their name have been put in databases that I used to have access to when I work with government that mm -hmm. do not do business with them because of Medicaid, Medicare fraud, and other librarians that have gotten fraud, tax fraud, PPE fraud, all kind of fraud in this country. So, yep. you know, no crime, you know, some crimes are bigger than the other. Nobody, yep. at least from our standpoint, we're not, we're not rejoicing it, but the lesson or the key takeaway for all of this exactly. is, is doing business the right way the way that is required by law in this yep. country or anywhere, mm -hmm. get wealth. And everybody can be Christian, but because I'm a Christian, build your wealth God's way, the yep. scripture way. That's all I have to say. But yep. if, if you can't take anything from this, follow the regulations of the of the whatever it is and yep. do your business. Because government not looking at you now. Does it mean they will not look at They're you? They're not looking at you, right? That means they ain't looking at you. They understaff, so they take their time to come to you. They will come to you. Mm -hmm. That all I can see. Beautiful, uh, 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 Mr. Beat around the bush. You got anything to say before we? <laughs> no, I can just. I mean, I mean, from what from what um, Toby is saying, I have a. You know, I pray. A lot, and I. I have a lot of prayer lines. Um, and then one of my line is I ask God to order my steps, right? Because from what Gabriel is talking, you never know, you know, which side of the the law you'll be on. And, you know, somebody can piss you off and you, you react yeah, wrongly right. and you, yeah. you, know, you cause a felony, you cause a soul. So I always ask the law to order my steps. And then I add by saying the law, the law should direct me to live in his will. Mm -hmm. Let his will be done in my life so that my light shall shine and other people will know that he lives, the Lord lives. That's my closing statement. Yeah. Hey, Pastor Alex. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> um, do, do, uh, tell me, I know we're out of time here. Do you have anything to say before we before we wrap up the show? It's funny. Uh, we didn't we didn't we didn't take comment, but again, I'm looking. We only have five comments. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe we're we're just going. bring us some comments at least uh, appropriate. Yeah, I think we went. I think I probably did something wrong. And excuse me here. Um, so I have. Um, uh coming here from Emmanuel said hi marketplace how can we focus on Liberia to harness financial accountability financial account financial accounting and business management creating microeconomic development for job creation in the future um I don't know if we were talking about that maybe uh, that's that's a huge topic yeah that is that is we're talking about business continuity today uh, Emmanuel mm -hmm. um 
So maybe uh, next time. Uh, and then we have this one from Ali Rock. Hello, my name Shamar Boom, and would like to share some things about one of your members, Samson H. William. Never heard of him. Wait, that. what? Where's Samson Williams? I don't know where he come from with that. It wasn't going like a scam. Mm -mm. Yeah. It's a good it's supposed to mean good day. Good bye. Good bye. Good bye. Good bye, P. By sorry, huh? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I was the only one struggling with that. Uh, this is Percy. He said, "What is the topic today? <clears throat> it can't be about another network." What is it? <laughs> yeah, another network is a is a case in point. That's the use case. Right, so exactly. We're talking about. Well, I, don't, I don't think we're talking about a network. We're not talking about a network. We're talking yeah, about the case, which is a public information. Case. We're using right. that case as a use case to discuss right. succession planning. Yeah. yeah um i think that was it and this is i, I guess this is uh somebody agreeing with you pelvi um, mm -hmm. in terms of your closing that mm -hmm. was it we didn't have i think I, I think i messed up something but i will check with uh dennis later on i think i messed up something here because uh, mm -hmm. i know we usually got a lot of people or either that maybe like the the spoon stuff, nobody won't come in and talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we, 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 we discussed the cheese part of it. We, we, did, we did not. We're just talking. <laughs> right. We're just looking at it from the business side of things. How do you continue your business? Right. They'll watch it later. Right. Exactly. Um, but anyway, that's all we have for comments. And um, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, any closing statement uh, from you? Yeah, I think it was a good show. I'm glad we talked about succession planning. And that's something yeah. we should talk about more and more. It's important because a lot of librarians, you know, are going to business more and more, you know, even though they, even if they have their day job, they're doing as a side gig. And so it's very important, um, you know, to talk about, uh, you know, making these contingency plans. So I yeah. think so. Yeah, and uh, uh, that's something that is very important to talk about. And uh, for those of you who have, you know, deal with, you know, you know, many librarian business. If you that's if you do, you know, I think that's something. It, it's I think people don't like asking for help, or people feel like they don't like to come to some somebody and say, "Oh, I don't know this. Can you help me?" Or How, "What is your idea on this?" And we need to be able to to do that more. If you don't know something in terms of business, business planning, business continuity, because that's a whole bargain within itself ask somebody it's not it's no it's not a you know it's not a hard thing to do ask somebody to guide you through that but i'm glad this was a great topic um i i, I wish we could um we could expand on it more but this is it was a great topic and i think uh hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as we did as well um but for me that's 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 all i had to say um i don't have a lot to in terms from a closing statement standpoint um I did enjoy it. I, you know, tell me, I can tell you that I never seen you being this lively. At really? all. No, <laughs> at all. No. I'm always uh, like this. Maybe you know, in the show, I can be shy. I'm not a people don't know. I I'm think you you're, all, like, yeah, okay, you're always shy. Yeah, I'm very shy on camera, but one on one, oh, this is tell me every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's 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 I, I don't I think I, that question, like you just kept going and going and go. I said, whoa, you know, I just I. You know, hopefully I can get that out of you every time. You know, when you do something, it, it, I think it will help again because it's something that I have lived through. You know, exactly. You know, the passion it. comes right out. So, yeah, so it comes up naturally. But I can just picture yeah. somebody on it and, you know, yeah. just the whole thing about it. So yeah. whole session, we can go on and on about all yeah. these government audits. Yeah. You know? Perfect, perfect. But without further ado, we thank you for taking the time to watch uh, the show. Next week, we're going to be talking about the concession uh um that was a, a company that was so i think some part in maryland where you know um we're going to be talking about that also we're going to be talking about the tax uh waiver that was given by the minister of finance uh you know what are the regulations around that whether he's able to do that um uh, so we're going to be talking about that as well so uh join us next week saturday same time and we thank you for watching the show. Share it. Uh, if you want to, you're going to watch it later. Still uh, reach out to us and 
private and ask your question. We'll still answer your questions. Um, but without further ado, thank you for watching the show. And as we always say, uh, we didn't come here to badge anybody. We just look at things from the business side and uh, Stanton, wherever you are, um, I, my advice to you is just get a good team, a lawyer, and then let them take you from there and do what you got to do. But without further ado, thank you. And as we always said, we are all librarians, whether you like it or not. That's something you don't have any control over. So see you. Ciao. Thank you. Yeah. We all love you, man. Yeah.